So Razer has definitely built up a nice lineup of gaming headsets over the years. We've checked out pretty much all of them here on the channel, including the most recent lineup of V2 models. The latest being the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro, which I personally felt was somewhat overpriced. In today's episode, we've got something a little bit different. We've got the Razer Barracuda X. It's a wireless gaming headset from Razer that comes in at 100 bucks, and it feels like somewhat of an upgrade to the Razer Black Shark V2. And it's got a lot going on. Check out what's in the box, for example. This time around, you have a sleek, minimalist headset that comes packed with a detachable microphone, USB Type-C dongle, 3.5 millimeter audio cable, and two USB cables, one being a USB Type-A to C, and the other coming in is the USB Type-A to C extender for the dongle. Why, you might ask? Well, for me, it works out great if I can't fit the dongle where I need, so an extender with an adapter is definitely useful. Overall, it does come packaged very nicely to go with its $100 price tag. It doesn't have Bluetooth or Synapse, which honestly, I'm not gonna miss the software with a headset like this. More on that later. For design, it's super comfortable to wear, whether you're gaming, watching movies, or listening to music, it holds up rather nicely, even in those longer gaming sessions. Now this is all thanks to a thick memory foam head fan and soft memory foam ear cushions that don't trap as much heat as I thought they would. Now in terms of overall looks, it picks up a nice sleek minimalist form factor that does keep a low profile. The logo is still there, but it's not as pronounced as before. With all this being said, I wouldn't mind taking this outside with me if I plan on doing some light work or gaming on my laptop. It resembles a similar form factor to something like my Sony XM4s, and for once, doesn't scream gaming headset when you take it out of the box. For controls, you have everything aligned nicely on your left ear cup, kicking off with the microphone mute button, volume wheel, power button, LED indicator, and all of your ports for charging and connectivity, which include one for your microphone, USB Type-C for charging, and a port for your 3.5 millimeter cable if you would like to go ahead and connect this to your Xbox controller. Now with all that being said, this headset does have support for pretty much everything. It will work on your Xbox, but it will be a wire connection as well as anything else that supports a 3.5 millimeter cable. You will have a wireless connection to your PC, PS5, and Nintendo Switch as long as you use that USB Type-C dongle. Battery life is also fairly decent. They're advertising around 20 hours on a full charge, which I found to be fairly accurate here in my use over the past week, week and a half. The only issue is you really can't tell the actual battery percentage without that Razer Synapse software, so keep that in mind. Now, most of the headset is plastic, aside from the steel headband, which holds everything together. The detachable microphone comes with a cardioid design and aligns properly with the microphone port to give you an easy way to connect and adjust it. For specs, you get 40 millimeter Triforce drivers that work with Dolby Atmos and THX spatial audio. Frequency response is 100 to 10,000 hertz, and for weight, it comes in at 250 grams, which is much lighter than most gaming headsets, including the Xbox wireless headset that came out a few months back. Now for sound, the headset has a decent amount of bass. I wouldn't say it's enough for someone like me who's a bass junkie, but for the general population, it should work out to be just fine. Listening to music was about what you'd expect from a gaming headset in this price range, and you don't experience too much noise bleeding unless you're at full volume. Directional audio was also decent as well. I was able to hear footsteps and pick up on gunfights and explosions near me, as well as off into the distance when running games like Warzone and Apex Legends. You are able to get somewhat of a quality boost when pairing this with the THX Spatial Audio. However, that is something you will have to pay for separately once your trial runs out. Next up, let's go ahead and take this up into the game room to see how the microphone quality stacks up against some of my other current favorite gaming headsets that I'm using while we also run a few other tests. All right, guys, so now we're up here in the game room. This is a soundproof room for those of you that have never been here before. This is where I like testing out the microphones on the gaming headsets, the USB microphones, and so on. Currently, I'm talking to you guys on the Shure MV7. Let's go ahead and switch over to the Razer Barracuda X so you guys can see what this one sounds like in comparison. This is what the microphone quality sounds like on the Razer Barracuda X. If you are new to the channel, please make sure you subscribe. And only if you end up liking this video, please make sure you smash that like button for me. Now let's go ahead and test this microphone out against some of my other current favorite gaming headsets that I'm using up here. I've got the Odyssey Penrose, the Odyssey Mobius, the HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless, and I also have the Corsair Virtuoso, which if you guys don't know, has the best microphone out of any gaming headset that I've ever tested. This is what the microphone quality sounds like on the Razer Barracuda X. This is what the microphone quality sounds like on the Corsair Virtuoso gaming headset. This is what the microphone quality sounds like on the Odyssey Mobius gaming headset. This is what the microphone quality sounds like on the Odyssey Penrose gaming headset. This is what the microphone quality sounds like on the HyperX Cloud 2 wireless gaming headset. Once again, this is what the microphone quality sounds like on the Razer Barracuda X. Once again, this is what the microphone quality sounds like on the Corsair Virtuoso gaming headset. Once again, this is what the microphone quality sounds like on the Odyssey Mobius gaming headset. Once again, this is what the microphone quality sounds like on the Odyssey Penrose gaming headset. Once again, 
This is what the microphone quality sounds like on the HyperX Cloud 2 wireless gaming headset. Let me know down below in the comments section which one of these you guys think sounded the best. For me, it's either going to be the Corsair Virtuoso or the Odyssey Mobius. Now, for me, the Virtuoso has always been my favorite. I feel like it's been the best mic you can pick up on a headset. But honestly, the more and more I use the Odyssey Mobius, the more and more I think that mic sounds a little bit better. Let me know what you guys think. I'm always curious. All right, so let's talk about noise isolation here for a second. I can hear some stuff going on around me, but the headset is fairly tight. So it's, I'd say snug. It's not too tight on the temples. If you're wearing glasses, you should be fine. And you also don't have any Razer Synapse software. So for noise isolation, it's a decent headset. Nothing crazy. It doesn't have active noise cancellation or anything like that. But it is fairly decent. In terms of software, you don't have any Razer Synapse software. Thank God. I hate that software. It's always buggy for me. In general, I hate software. You guys know this. If you've seen me here on the channel before reviewing uh, the Cam Engine software on the Avery Media webcam or... Any other software in general, I can't stand having to use software to get the full potential of any product that I'm reviewing. Now, sure, you need the equalizer for some stuff like footsteps and stuff like that. You guys prefer that. But that usually comes into effect for something like the Odyssey Mobius or the HyperX Cloud Orbit S, even the JBL Quantum 800. For those more premium headsets, I don't mind the software. But at the same time, for something like this at 100 bucks, I really don't think you need it. Now, for those headsets being premium, you do get a lot of functionality, and the software is premium with it as well, which is probably why I don't experience any issues with it. Whereas with those cheaper headsets, even like the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro, stuff like that, I don't feel like you need the Razer Synapse software, especially when there's no RGB lighting to configure either. So I feel like it's just another thing that's going to throttle your PC, and it's unnecessary. Now, another test I always like doing for you guys up here in the game room is to see how much keyboard clicking the microphones on these headsets pick up. So currently we're about a foot and a half away from the keyboard here. And it doesn't seem to be picking up anything. It picks up a little bit when I start talking because that's when my noise gate opens up. But super similar to the Razer Black Shark V2 models. Those didn't pick up anything. I'm assuming it has a super similar mic. Yeah, it's not picking up anything. So whether you guys are planning on using this microphone on this headset to stream, record, talk to your friends in Discord, party chat, game chat, whatever it is, that's what the microphone quality sounds like, and that's how much keyboard clicking it actually picks up. Now, the microphone quality isn't the best, as you guys heard. I'm kind of bummed out. I was expecting something a little bit better, especially at this price point. Thankfully, I got you guys covered with this part of the video that is sponsored by Elgato. For the longest time here on the channel, we've tried to find the best microphone for gamers and streamers to give you amazing, crisp, clear audio with the perfect software to match. The Elgato Wave 3 is my favorite USB microphone to use no matter what situation I'm in. You have a ton of accessories you can pick up to make this mic your all-in-one go-to for your setup. From shock mounts to desktop extensions to external pop filters, Elgato's got you covered. The Wave 3 also has built-in clip guard technology as well as an internal pop filter to make sure you don't experience any breathing or distortion in your streams and recordings. The best part of all, the software lets you control your game volume, your music, your friends in Discord, and everything else you've got going on all separately. You have separate mixers for both yourself and your stream, giving you full control and transparency at your fingertips. Now it is one of my favorite microphones to use, especially when it comes to using software. If you want to see more, I will make sure to have a link down below for you guys. Now coming back to this guy, if you're looking for a comfortable, lightweight wireless gaming headset that is affordable, I can definitely recommend the Razer Barracuda X. You have a ton of different ways you can connect this headset, which makes it appealing for gamers on a budget. Pair that up with decent battery life and virtual surround sound, and it's absolutely worth its price point. Now, if your primary console is Xbox, I'd actually recommend you pick up the Xbox wireless headset instead of this one for full functionality. If you want to pick up this headset, I will make sure to have it linked down below for you, along with the other headsets that we compared it to in this video. If you want to see more, go ahead and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Detroit Fury. And if you enjoyed this content, please make sure you smash that like button for me, subscribe, and turn on your post notifications. It really helps me out. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.